Hi. So I may have gotten a little bit behind again in my festivity 365 challenge. I don't really have a good excuse this time. I mean, I wasn't so much as burnt out as I just stopped making the videos every day. And look, after my burnout in August, I said I wasn't going to be so thingy about making one every single day. If I missed a couple, that was fine. I missed more than a couple now. And I'm, I'm sorry. I'm also sorry about the shadow behind me. Um, I've, I've lost my lighting kit I was using. And I had ordered a new one from Amazon. But I, I found out today, I kept on saying it was going to arrive. And then it didn't. And it didn't, and it didn't. Kept on saying, it'll arrive today, it'll arrive today, it'll arrive today. Turns out today, on the app, it now says it was damaged in transit, it's been sent back to the seller. So hence shadows and a slightly, slightly orangey feel to the, the hue. Anyway, you're probably wondering what today is. It's Authors Day. First of November, Authors Day. This day has absolutely nothing to do with NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month, of which I am not taking part this year, because uh, I just don't have time. But, uh, yeah, pure coincidence that it ends up on the same day that NaNoWriMo starts. Just one of those nice little coincidences in life. But what is Authors Day? Well, it's a day to celebrate authors, specifically American ones. Why American ones? Well, that's because it started in America, funnily enough. Um, in 1928, in the Illinois Women's Club, a woman called Nellie McPherson decided to bring up the idea of having a National Authors Day to celebrate great American literature and great American authors. It's not a bad idea. There are some great American authors out there. You've got F. Scott Fitzgerald, uh, writer of The Great Gatsby. Uh, more recently, you've got people like Jonathan Fran... I apologise if I'm mangling his name. Franzine? Am I remembering that right? Jonathan Franzine, writer of The Corrections. Um, and he's got a more recent one now, which I can't remember the name of, but I, I know The Corrections. Um, and that is a brilliant story. I really enjoyed that. But it's big, it's thick. So American authors, they're, they're great to celebrate. Let, let's celebrate them. I, would, I thought I will come home and I will try and find an American author on my shelf, which I have not read. One of the many, many hundreds of books I have on my shelf that I've not read. One of them must be by a great American author. Apparently not. I have some, uh, I have one novel by one I would consider a great American author. And that is Go Set a Watchman by Harper Lee. Somewhere I've also got The Great Gatsby, but that might be up the loft. Um, this is the sequel to the, uh, the well-versed school text of, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. Many of us studied that in GCSE. And this is the sequel that has been published years after her death and is nowhere near as good as the original. <laughs> I can tell you that. Uh, I've read it already, which is why I'm not going to read it today. But let's talk about it. It's nowhere near as good as the original, basically. Um, it, it was in her drawer, unpublished, for a reason. She did not want it published. I mean, it's okay. Look, it's fine. It just takes a while to get going. The first half, I just kept on getting... I couldn't get into it. I kept on reading a chapter, putting it down for like a whole month, and then reading another chapter and putting it down for a whole month. And... Uh, which was problematic, because I had borrowed this copy off my friend, and I had it for about a year. <laughs> and during that year... The edges got a bit frayed, and I, in the end I decided I couldn't really give it back to him, so I bought him another copy and kept this one. Uh, but it just, you know, she didn't want this published. Harper Lee didn't want this published. But, of course, after her death, she doesn't really get a say in it, and people knew, publishers knew it would make some money, and so they, they published it. But look, it's okay. It's, it's an okay book, uh, but it's nowhere near as good as To Kill a Mockingbird basically. The only other thing by a great American writer that I can uh, have found, and not so much an author, but a playwright. I've got several plays by Tennessee Williams on my shelf, um, two of which I've acted in, so we've definitely read those. Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, which is this one, and Streetcar Named Desire. So you could check those out. They are good. They are good. 
Um, and, if, and you know, I would fully recommend reading plays as well as going to see them. Um, you don't have to be into theatre particularly to enjoy them, um, but it's it's a, it's a different way of reading. Um, and I, I think you can get a lot from reading a play. You can visualise it as, as, as on a stage and you get, yeah, there's, there's a, it's a completely different type of reading. Um, and it's good to broaden your horizons like that, I guess. So, yeah, that's two, two American authors. Let's celebrate them. Tennessee Williams for this play and others that are brilliant. And Harper Lee for her other brilliant novel, her only other novel, that uh, is much better than the one I'm holding in my hand. So that's American Authors Day. That's all I'm going to do. Um, thanks for watching. I will hopefully be here tomorrow to celebrate something else. I tell you what, let's look what it is. Tomorrow I could celebrate International Project Management Day. Sounds a bit boring, doesn't it? Use less stuff day. I can do that. I can use I can use less stuff. Deviled eggs day. Men make dinner day. Probably wouldn't tomorrow because we probably won't be eating together tomorrow, so that's that's not gonna work. Hmm. I'll have to think about which one of those I'm gonna celebrate. In the meantime, thanks for watching and uh, hopefully I will get rid of these shadows soon when when i when some new lights finally arrive if families and get their act together. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you soon. Goodbye.